Top of the morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here to react to new album, Coldplay, Music of the Spheres. Now, Coldplay, uh, I would say one of my favorite bands in the music. They are masters of their craft. And uh, each time, this is what I like the most, each time they come to approach a new project, they uh, create an idea in their heads, like the how the visual is gonna look like, uh, what's gonna be the name of the project, right? And what's, wh what is it gonna be about? And then they start writing songs for uh, for that album. So I like that idea. I like how, like they, are able to, come up with new things, but still stay true to themselves. It's not an exception with this album as well. It's Coldplay. Again and again, <laughs> through and through, it's Coldplay album, uh, Music of the Spheres. I would divide Coldplay into two different periods of time, uh, Coldplay of the 2000s and Coldplay of 2010s. Uh, Coldplay of 2000s, uh, the albums were structured a bit differently. They had four albums uh, in 2000s, right? And the fourth one uh, is my favorite one, uh, Viva La Vida. In 2000s projects, Coldplay were trying to make great albums. They try to make the albums that are, from start to finish, great songs. And, you know, it, it depended on the taste. Which song is your favorite? Which song someone could find uh, least interesting for them? But uh, in the end, they were very strong albums, really high quality albums. Coldplay of 2000 cents, uh, most of the time it was more about hey, let's have a couple hit singles, everything around, we will just um, uh, uh, try, our, try our best, definitely, but our albums will be defined by, by those singles. Uh, that's at least what I felt with Milo Zylado, with Ghost Stories, with A Head Full of Dreams. Obviously, there were still some good songs besides single too in those, in those projects, like for example, the track O from Ghost Stories, the last track, a uh, really beautiful piece. But at the same time, nobody would deny that Adventure of a Lifetime and uh, Hymn for the Weekend are the best songs of uh, uh, an album called, called A Head Full of Dreams. Um, nobody would deny that Magic and Sky Full of Stars are best songs of, of ghost stories. Same with uh, Paradise from Milo Zyalta. So now compare that uh, to uh, my favorite album from Coldplay, Viva La Vida. Uh, which has one hit single, <laughs> uh, Viva La Vida. But uh, that ne doesn't necessarily mean that other tracks are not as good. There are so many great songs. Uh, in fact, I love every single song of that album. Uh, and it's uh, hard to skip anything. It's such a, such a powerful album uh, from front to back. And um, therefore, it's my favorite album. Uh, so, but if you, you see that how they try to create, you know, projects from start to finish, bangers, rather than uh, having a, a two or three radio hits for sure, um, so that we, we are still popular, <laughs> I would say, right? Um, but any, anyway, that does, that's not necessarily a bad thing, I'm just uh, comparing Coldplay from the past and Coldplay now from the present, and um, this album, uh, this album, the reason why I uh, I'm portraying you this picture of Coldplay is because uh, this album is kind of sticking to the formula of 2010s uh, and we don't count everyday life uh, and at the moment, yes, they dropped in 2019, that album was dropped in 2019, uh, but it doesn't stick to the formula I just described about 2010s. Everyday life is something in its own, actually. Everyday life is pretty pretty um different coldplay album uh even comparing to 2000s actually i really like that album actually this one is kind of sticking to that uh albums of 2010s with a um milo zyoto uh, ghost stories and head uh full of dreams however i would say i would argue actually that even if it's sticking to that um the songs uh, you definitely have the strong singles, right? Like two, three so strong singles I was talking about. But in this case, with a Music of the Spheres, um, 
I would say the other songs that are built around those singles, they are um, stronger. They are actually stronger than the albums I previously mentioned. Maybe Milo Zyalto comes close to this album, uh, but I feel like um, this album is superior to those three albums that I was uh, mentioning because honestly, with those three albums I mentioned from 2010s, I um, never, from front to back, I never uh, like was able to listen to them uh, because uh, I don't really find every song worth listening to. Uh, I skip maybe half of the album <laughs> when I listen to um, Ghost Stories, for example. I, from Ghost Stories, I, even if there's only 10 tracks, I only like listen to four or five. Uh, same with uh, A Head Full of Dreams. Um, Miles out a little bit more, like there are, there are plenty of good songs, but um, this one, I never, I never found any, like any bad song or a song that uh, uh, is uh, worth skipping. Maybe exception would be uh, track number six, uh, the heart emoji, uh, we, with We Are King and Jacob Collier as collaborators. It's not bad by any means, it's pretty beautiful. It's just um, to my taste again, the taste is important, right? To my taste, uh, because of the, you know, nothing really happening, it's just kind of uh, in the choir style, in ensemble style. Uh, Jacob Collier, We Are King and Coldplay are approaching this track without any instrumental. There is just their voices and they're singing slowly, which is good uh, sounding track, but I wouldn't really come back to it all the time. You know, that's the only song <laughs> I would probably skip if I li I'm listening to this album. Uh, and again, I'm listening to this album for its second or third day. I still haven't skipped it once, but I'm just saying that I, I'm seeing myself in the future skipping this song. But other songs are really good. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised actually that um, I'm liking this album as much as I'm as I am, <laughs> because because like the singles Higher Power, My Universe didn't give me that much hope when they just dropped without this project. But when I got this project uh, and I'm seeing the full picture of it and I'm seeing the whole arrangement and like the whole package and what Coldplay was going for, I really, really actually enjoy it because again, as I was saying, they created a world here, right? They created the, its own aesthetic. It's another album idea, an album concept, a new concept. And all the songs are circulating within this uh, content. And it's quite different from other Coldplay material, but, and yet, and yet it's still so Coldplay. So that's why I started with that. Uh, and I, I, I really enjoy that. Higher Power as a first single, I didn't really enjoy it, but now uh, it's a powerful, powerful start to this album. I, and I like how uh, it's hitting, like the, the first track, right? The planet uh, is just an interlude, correct? Uh, the end of all the emojis and plan, uh, planet uh, symbols on the track list. Uh, those tracks are pretty much interludes. Uh, even the track six again that I mentioned. Uh, it, it, to me, it feels like an interlude. Uh, Coldplay can say whatever you want, but to me, it feels like an interlude. But those interludes are necessary to to create this world, you know what I mean? To create music of the spheres, to establish it as uh, as an album. Because without those songs, uh, we only have seven songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? We only have seven songs, uh, seven good songs. All of them are really good, actually, They're really strong songs. Uh, but these interludes, they add to to those songs and make it uh, make it more cohesive experience um yeah so the first track i like how it starts slowly like builds up and then it transitions to higher power da -da 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 -da. like it's just i really love that dynamic it's really powerful and then we have uh, humankind also a good song and then uh, let somebody go with Selena Gomez, by the way, who I really love, and I already reacted uh, to that song on my channel. If you want to see my 
uh, in-depth review of that track, uh, you can check it out. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on let somebody go here. Uh, and then we have um, uh, track six I already mentioned, and then People of the Pride, uh, beautiful. People of the Pride, I really like that sort of more rock uh, dynamic there. You know, it's more up-tempo, it's strong. It's not that um, music of the spheres lack energy. I would say otherwise, actually this album as a whole, it's it's very, very lively, it's like juicy, you know, it's very colorful, it's vibrant, and the whole album, it's, uh, it's a really, really good universe that welcomes you in, and I really, really enjoy uh, when I'm staying in that universe, if you know what I mean, so I really enjoy that, and it, it just, People of the Pride, uh, especially, I would say, added uh, to the energy because while other tracks are more synth pop here is it's uh, it's going towards that alternative oh i'm shaking the table i'm shaking the camera it's going towards that um alternative uh, rock style and i and i really enjoy it we also have uh, beautiful incredible track can be a single as well uh, we have My Universe uh, with BTS and uh, definitely Coldplay knew what they were doing with that collaboration, <laughs> bringing in so many uh, more uh, people across the world. Uh, it's different scene, you know, K-pop, uh, K-pop fans, different scene. They would be really uh, interested to check out uh, Coldplay now because oh they collaborate with BT BTS, you know, and if it's if the song is good and it's a good song, those. K-pop fans might check out other Coldplay songs just to see uh, if they, obviously, you know, a lot of people know Coldplay, but who knows, like, uh, still, there are so many young people, young fans, K-pop fans that might never heard of Coldplay. Uh, so uh, I think it was a smart business move, but it's also a smart uh, musical collaboration because in the end, Coldplay are artistic creatures and they they want um, to uh, collaborate with interesting artists around the world and um, interesting talent and see what they can, can come up with, uh, uh, they can come up together. And then the finish is Coloratura, which is a, I would say, track where uh, like many Coldplay's previous albums collide between each other together. You can find a lot of Coldplay's older material in this track. 10 minute track, yes, 10 minute track. <laughs> Pretty big outro, but definitely still a good song. All seven tracks that are not named uh, emojis, to say, that are not interludes, are really strong. And uh, I'm glad that it's not only uh, two, three singles, that it was like, like it was in 2010s, but actually the whole album feels strong and cohesive because there are a lot of, more than few good tracks, a few memorable tracks, I would say, a few more than few memorable tracks in this album. So kudos to Coldplay and um, my rating would be 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this project and uh, I would recommend to check it out and see how you like it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, hit the like button and uh, subscribe to this channel. Definitely comment what you think about this Coldplay album and uh, what, what rating, rating would you give uh, to these guys, uh, Chris Martin and company. <laughs> uh, Chris Martin, damn. Chris Mar Martin, I just discovered that Chris Martin is dating Dakota Johnson. Oh my God, Dakota Johnson. Who would have thought? But uh, definitely she's an awesome girl. She's uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you so much again, and I'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye.